Some months ago, I made a video about the functional aspects of an FT857D CAT Maya web browser. In this video, I will address the technical aspects. The summary of the presentation. What were the project goals? To implement a web app for an FT857 CAT able to have a realistic view of the radio front panel, display the main radio parameters such as frequency, mode, S meter, transmit, receive, and so on, input frequency and mode, simulate the VFO DL, toggle the VFOs, the split and clarifier functions. Implement the web server on an ESP32 connected to Wi-Fi because I already implemented the CAT library on ESP32. Take into account browsers on PCs, tabs, and if possible on smartphone if the screen is large enough. The test configuration. First, the ESP32, which is a link to the radio by a serial link, which is the CAT link. In the ESP32, we can find two parts. The application which interfaces the radio and displays the parameters on the card screen and the web server, which is connected through Wi-Fi to web clients, one on PC on the Windows 10 and one on a tab. The global architecture. First, the ESP32 part, which is the .ino program, with the ESP32 application in the loop part, this application sends commands to the radio through the CAT library and processes answers to update the radio parameters in global variables and updates the ESP32 screen. Second part, the web server. The web server reads the radio parameters in global variables and is able to send commands through the CAT library to the radio. The web server is linked to the web client by the Wi-Fi network. Now, a detail on the ESP32 loop, uh, which is uh, straightforward. On a timer of uh, 500 milliseconds, there is parameter request sent to the radio through the CAT commands, processing of the CAT responses and update of the global variables, and update of the ESP32 display. The web server part. At the client initialization, there's the sending from the SPIF memory zone of the contents of the files index.html, jogdl.js, style.css, and of all images. On FT857 parameter request from a client, sending of a value of a corresponding global variable. On update request from the client, mode or frequency, or action request, such as VFO toggle, split, and etc. There's a direct call to the FT857 CAT library to execute the command.
how is composed the web browser display. The background is the radio image. In HTML5, it is possible to define clickable zones on images, and here the clickable zones are defined with dotted yellow. We have the mode selection, the fast, the frequency input, the clarifier on off, the toggle of VFOs, and the split. Here we have the VFO simulation management, which is done by jogdial.js. The images are superposed to the radio image. We have two images, the DIR and the knob. The knob image is a clickable zone to allow the rotation of the dial. To display the parameters, we have a background image in a range, and then four lines. Line one contains the yes meter, the split option, the DSP parameters, the key parameters and the indicator of transmit receive. Line 2 contains the VFO selected and the mode. Line 3 contains the frequency and here the clarifier on off. The last line is fixed and corresponds to the function of the clickable zones. What is the web client application sequencing? Two ways. On click for mode or frequency, data is input from a form and the client sends a GET request to the web server. On click on clarifier, split or VFO AB, the client sends a specific GET request to the web server. On click on fast, this option is locally managed and there is a local change of the frequency delta calculation step, which is fast or not. And there is a display of a fast animated GIF, a small runner, if the fast option is toggled. Second part on timer every 600 milliseconds. If the VFO dial delta is not zero, the client recounts the frequency delta and sends it with a GET request to the web server. The client then sends a GET request to the web server for each of the radio parameters. On data receipt, it updates the display. Now the VFO management managed by jogdial.js. On the VFO knob drag, a rotation, the Jodal function counts the number of degrees since the initialization, and this value is stored in the current rotation number. The software bench. I use the IDE Arduino for the ESP32 application. At the beginning of the development, all source code was stored in the .ino program file. All means the C++, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But as the development went on, it was more convenient 
to store all the web client source code in dedicated files, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and all also images, in the dedicated zone of the ESP32, which is called the SPF memory. For the addition of the web files, I use Atom, which is more convenient because it knows all the syntax of CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. And moreover, Atom is linked to GitHub for the modifications. For the browsers, I used Firefox, Edge, and Samsung on Android. What is the ID source directory structure? The main directory, the directory data, where all the files for the client are stored. It is stored in the SPF memory and the .ino program. Three libraries are used, the ESPA Sync web server to manage the asynchronous web server, the FT8570D ESP32 to manage the CAT with the radio. This library was ported from Arduino, and the last one, the TFT ESPI, which manages the TFT screen on the ESP32 card. The references, the link to my site, the source code on GitHub, a comprehensive site for all developments and tutorials on ESP32, but also on Arduino and Raspberry Pi, random NERD tutorials, a comprehensive site for web developments, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and so on, from W3 schools, a site to download the Atom Editor, the site for the libraries, that the libraries are saved with the source code on GitHub to have the right versions. So I hope this uh, video was interesting. Don't hesitate to ask me questions and have fun.